Hey guys, welcome to GER Hub Mathematics and Statistics lesson. In today's video, we shall be talking about the quotient rule of differentiation. Yes, we shall be considering a case where y, a function, is expressed as um, a quotient of two independent functions, u and v, say, where y, u, and v are all dependent on the same independent variable. So we want to show that if y is expressed as u over v, then dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x, can be expressed as v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared. Now, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please click the subscription button below and endeavor to turn on your notification bell. Also, help us like, share, and comment on our videos. This is important to the growth of this channel. Now, let's begin. Now welcome back. So if given y equals u over v, what we want to show or prove is the, is the quotient rule of differentiation. Now I would want you to make recourse to my video on product rule of differentiation, okay? So this is what we are going to start with. We are going to start with a step one. In my step one, like we did or discussed in my, my video on first principle of differentiation, all you have to do in your step one is to make increments in the dependent and independent variable. So if y increases by an infinitesimal change in y, then this must have come from infinitesimal changes in u and v. So these infinitesimal changes will be called delta v, delta u, delta y. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is to make change in y, that is delta y, the subject of formula. So after making increments in the independent variable and um, u and v, okay, the component um, functions, what you are going to do is to make change in y the subject of formula, that is the infinitesimal change in y, make it the subject of formula. So that would mean u plus change in u all over v plus change in v minus y, okay? So next you will see that we have already been given our y to be u over v. So what I'm going to do here is to replace this y here with u over v, okay? So this remains u plus change in u, all over v plus change in v. Then in place of y, we are going to put u over v, okay? Now the next thing we are going to do is to simplify further, okay? So I'm going to simplify further. Holding on to this result, let us simplify further. So I'm going to simplify further. So, the next thing we are going to do is to take LCM. The LCM of V and V plus change in V will be V in bracket V plus change in V. Okay? So, when V plus change in V goes into this LCM, we are left with V and V would multiply the, this um, numerator here, U plus change in U. So, we end up having V in bracket U plus change in U. Minus, when V goes into the LCM, you will be left with V plus change in V. So V plus change in V multiplies U, and we have U in bracket V plus change in V. Okay? Now we'll continue with our simplification. We'll continue with our simplification. V multiplies this to give you UV. V opens up the bracket again um, to multiply change in U, and you have V change in U. Okay? Minus U multiplies V to give you UV. Minus UV. And minus u multiplies change in v to give you minus u change in v. And this will be all over v times v is v squared. v times change in v will be v change in v. Okay? Now, we would continue the simplification to the final step. And this would mean uv can actually cancel out uv. And that will leave us with v change in u minus u change in v all over v squared plus v change in v. So, having gotten the final expression for change in y, I can call this the end of my step one. So, the next thing I'll be doing will be going into my step two, okay? So, in my step two, I'll be obtaining the gradient function. And the gradient function, to obtain the gradient function, simply requires that you divide both sides of the last equation by change in x. So, I'm going to do that quickly. Dividing change in y by change in x would mean dividing all that I have here by change in x. So I'm going to divide this by change in x. Okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do will be to write out this again and further simplify my right-hand side. 
So this will be V changing U minus U changing V all over V squared plus V change in V. So when this becomes multiplication, it becomes 1 over change in X. Okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do will be to swap the denominators. So I'm going to take change in X over here and take this over here. So doing that does not actually alter anything. We've not done anything wrong. So this will become change in Y over change in X equals V change in U minus U change in V all over change in X times 1 over V squared minus uh, V squared plus V change in V. Okay, so that is what we have. Let's hold on to that result again. Now I'm going to continue. Change in Y all over change in X becomes V change in U all over change in X minus U change in V all over change in X. Of course, since they both have the, the two terms have the same denominator, then it means you can actually write it in this manner. Times, so I'm going to put this in a bracket, times 1 over V squared plus V change in V. Okay? V change in V. Now, what I'm going to do here will be to begin my step 3. In my step 3, I haven't obtained this result. I'm going to take my, my uh, derivative in my step 3. So, the Y, the X. Now, what did we define the Y, the X to be? We defined it to be the limiting value as change in X tends to zero of whatsoever you obtain as change in Y all over change in X. That is the gradient function. That would mean taking the limit of all these. Remember, this is now my gradient function, an expression for my gradient function. So I'm going to take the limit of each term here in this first bracket. Taking the limit of the first term, would mean V comes out since relatively it appears to be a constant. I'll bring out V, take the limit as change in X tends to zero of change in U all over change in X minus U comes out as a constant since change in X is tending to zero and it looks at U as a constant. In bracket, um, the limit, I'm going to take the limit as change in um, X tends to zero of change in V all over change in X. Okay, then finally, I'm going to take the limit of the last, um, this product here. I'm going to take the limit as change in X tends to zero of all these I'm going to put in brackets times the limit of um, one all over V squared plus V change in V. So that will be the final result there. Now, take note, as change in X tends to zero, what you must take note of is that as change in X tends to zero, change in U, since, it is dependent, um, since U is dependent on X, V is dependent on X, and Y is also dependent on X, as change in X tends to zero, change in U and change in V would also tend to zero. So, what it means is that in this particular term where we have change in V, as change in X tends to zero, this will become zero, and zero will multiply V, meaning that zero times V will give you zero, and we'll be left with one over V squared here, okay? And as change in X tends to zero, the gradient function in U, that is changing U over changing X, becomes the U dx. The gradient function in V, changing V over changing X, as change in X tends to zero, becomes the V dx. And that implies that our result summarizes to be this. So our result will summarize the final, to give us a final result the y dx becomes v times the limiting value of this gradient function in u becomes the u dx. So v the u dx is what you have here, minus u times the limiting value as change in x tends to zero of change in v over change in x, which gives you the, the derivative of v with respect to x, the v dx. Okay? So I'm going to put this in a bracket. Times. Now this will leave us with 1 over v squared. And I've explained that earlier. Why would it leave us with 1 over v squared? It would leave us with 1 over v squared because as change in x tends to 0, change in v tends to 0. So this becomes 0. 0 will multiply v to give you 0. And 0 plus v squared will give you v squared. So you end up having 1 over v squared here. Now remember, if we don't want to express this in this manner, if this multiplies 1 over this, then it is the same as writing v du dx minus u dv dx 
all over v squared that is divided by v squared and that establishes the quotient rule of differentiation so from this term we end up having this okay so if you don't want to write one over v squared you can write it as all these in this bracket divided by v squared and that will give you the quotient rule of differentiation uh, <coughs> excuse me so now let's take an example to illustrate how to use the quotient rule of differentiation now if you have the question in mind when should we use the quotient rule of differentiation you should use the quotient rule of differentiation when a particular function y is expressed as a ratio of two functions or as a quotient of two functions so that is when you should be using the quotient rule so let's take an example let us assume let us assume that you were given this to differentiate x squared plus 3 3x all over 2x raised to the power 4 minus 4x squared you are given this to differentiate now why would the quotient rule of differentiation be appropriate for solving this problem it is because this particular function y which is dependent on x is clearly a ratio of two functions so i can actually call this function here u and i can call this one below v so at the end of the day you would come to realize that u is a function of x v is a function of x and y overall is a function of x which now appears to be y being dependent on u and v okay or being dependent on x through u and v now let us solve this problem just to illustrate how to use the quotient rule of differentiation now i'll begin with saying as a step one to solving the problem i'll begin with saying let u be equal to the numerator x squared plus 3x and i'll quickly obtain the y the u the x so the u the x for this one will be 2x plus 3 remember how we had talked about how to differentiate polynomial functions in particular use the power to multiply the coefficient in this case 2 times 1 the coefficient here is 1 so 2 multiplies 1 then subtract 1 from the power okay so that's how to um, differentiate polynomial functions use power to multiply coefficient then subtract one from power and it gives you the result so we've obtained the u the x now the next thing we are going to do is to say let v be equal to 2x raised to the power 4 minus 4x squared and that means the v the x will be equal to 4 times 2 8 x then you are left with 4 minus 1 giving you 3 okay so subtract one from the power use the power to multiply the coefficient then subtract one from the power that's what i'm doing now two times minus four will give us minus eight then um subtract one from two the power you end up having x raised to the power one which is x so we have obtained the u dx and the v dx the next thing i'm going to do after obtaining that is to write out the derivative okay so what are we told the y dx will be equal to v du dx minus u dv dx all over v squared so finally i'm going to write out my result i'm going to write out my result okay so what will our result be what will our result be finally we are going to write out what v is the y dx would be equal to what is our v our v was given as this okay 2x raised to the power 4 minus 4x squared so i'm going to write here 2x raised to the power 4 minus 4x squared in bracket what we get our d u dx to be i'm going to bring it in this is 2x plus 3 so i'm going to bring here 2x plus 3 minus what did we obtain what were we giving our u to be our u was given to us as x squared plus 3x so i'm going to write x squared plus 3x in one bracket then what is our derivative of v with respect to x the derivative of v with respect to x we are going to bring it in here so i'm going to bring this in and that will give us 8x cubed minus 8x okay all over what is our v squared our v squared will be what v is all squared so i'm going to write it as 2x raised to the power 4 minus 4x squared all squared now you don't really have to simplify it will be your choice depending on how they want you to present your result 
to simplify or not but this is the derivative of y with respect to x for the quotient function we've been given okay so you go over this video once more carefully and meticulously seeing what i have done from beginning to the end what i have just shown you is how to obtain the quotient rule of differentiation using the first principle and how to use it to solve problem taking note of when it should be used remember you can only use the quotient rule of differentiation when a function is given to you expressed as a quotient okay when the function is not expressed as a quotient you shouldn't be using quotient rule of differentiation if it is expressed as a product you use product rule if it is expressed as a quotient then use quotient rule i'll be seeing you in my next video please subscribe to the channel and endeavor to turn on your notification button and i'll be seeing you in my next video thank you